Welcome back to Scale Model Kit Review. This is your host, Steve. I just picked up this airbrush off of Amazon, and I'll put a link in the description below. And it was recommended by Rinaldi Studios. So this is the God 39 Airbrush Advanced Series, and this is designed for fine or medium airbrushing. Welcome back to my channel, Scale Model Kit Review. This is your host, Steve. This video is about airbrushes, and there is a very inexpensive airbrush that's readily available out there on Amazon, and it was highly recommended to me by Rinaldi Studios. And I'll show you that here in a second. I'd like to give you my experience and what I cut my teeth on as far as airbrushes go. I first learned an airbrush was on a single action Badger 200 airbrush and single action just as it says push down on the button and you get both the paint and the air at the same time this is a, a suction feed or a siphon feed and that's it I still have it to this day I painted my very first model which was a tank kit the Tamiya Stug 3 kit and I did a review of that earlier on my channel. I'll put a link down below and you can see what I did with this airbrush. Then of course I moved on to bigger and better things and along came the Aztec airbrush and uh, yes I use this immensely and I still have it. I have all the different color nozzles and it was a challenge. This is a double action push down and pull back type of airbrush but there it is. It still functions and uh, I don't use it today but uh, I've taken care of it as you can see. I did paint uh, Airfix 124 scale BF 109. I'll put a link down below for that video also. Many many years ago I used this but like I said I don't use it anymore. Then of course I moved up to an Iwata Evolution BCR and this is a side feed airbrush, double action airbrush and I have a whole series of Iwata airbrushes out there. I have gravity feed type of airbrushes also. And there you have that. My workhorse course is the Badger Airbrush, the Sotar 2020. This is one of the original ones. It doesn't have the star on it, so it's a little more difficult to change out the main bearing seal in the middle there. I'd probably have to send it in to Badger and have them replace it for me. But uh, I did change the trigger, put the longer trigger on this. But this is my work horse as far as fine detail airbrushing and such. My other airbrush that I use when it comes to laying down uh, more paint than just detailing, maybe priming, is my Badger 105 Patriot. And I have several of these. I have an extreme version of this. And uh, I really love these airbrushes. Well, let's go ahead and get on to the subject here. And this would be the Gallery airbrush. And it is available from Amazon. I'll put a link down below. And this here I purchased from Amazon and it's the GHAD-39. It comes with a 0.35 and a 0.5 millimeter and it's a dual action airbrush. So let's go ahead and look over this airbrush. I'll go ahead and take it out of the box. It is factory sealed. Go ahead and cut off that seal. And we'll take it out of the box here, live and on the camera for you, with you. Open it up. And here's a test sample that they did with this. And of course, I'll do my own test sample with you towards the end of this video. And 
quick start guide so if you've never operated an airbrush before this is the perfect airbrush for you because it's not that expensive it's under fifty dollars available on Amazon and shows you how to use the airbrush if you've never operated one before which is very nice because most uh, airbrushes don't come with this instruction guide so definitely worth it there this is a uh, very impressive indeed remember I, I did purchase this myself it was not sent to me as a sample so they do give us some extra seals and look at this wow that's impressive let's get a little closer look and you can see everything is neatly done here very nice take the airbrush out I want to see how it feels very nice it does it does have a very heavy feel to it uh, heavy duty feeling The action of the trigger feels good and pulling back very nice little clear cover and very nice there two different size cups it looks like the 0.5 nozzle located in there and I would say the 0.5 needle is found in here also. And this is worth it too, the, uh, the needle loop. Very nice. And also it comes with the screwed on quick disconnect for your air hose. And you can see here they explain everything that's located in the airbrush. Alright, so let me go ahead and uh, take this airbrush apart for you all and you can see how it how it comes apart. Um, first thing we'll do is we'll take off the end of it here. Very similar to my uh, Sotar 2020. Right, this is this is a limiting, a trigger limiter. You can adjust it and it will it will limit how far back you can push back on the trigger which is nice so if I want to limit my trigger pull I screw that in and then it only allow the trigger to go back so far and if you're doing short bursts of paint on your subject that's really helpful if you don't have that much control this is very helpful when it comes to that okay so We'll remove the needle here first and loosen up the set screw on the end, pull the needle out and look straight there. I don't see any issues with the needle. And we'll go ahead and take the trigger out. Very similar to what Iwata gives you with their trigger. Take the needle housing out. And it's a good idea to take your uh, brand new airbrush apart anyway to inspect it and just to make sure everything looks okay in this case. And you take everything apart here you can see you got the spring and all that in there and part of the trigger and take the quick disconnect off it does have a seal on there that's nice and we'll take the air valve out And the air valve also has a seal on it. Okay, this air valve is square. Most of them have a point to them, but this air valve looks good there. And that 
looks good. Notice the Teflon seal inside there for your color cup. Color cup just screws down on top of that. Needle guard comes off first. And then needle valve itself comes off after that. And there it is. Everything removed. Very easy to assemble. Let's get a little closer look at the needle valve. And there's your needle valve, how that all looks. Notice the opening on the side of the threads there. And then the needle itself. I've never seen them with the uh, air passages along the sides, so that's very unique there too. Very impressive. Of course, the other components for the needle. So, there's a seal here. Put it back together. And we'll actually, we'll drop that in. It's going to make it easier. Drop that in, and then we'll screw it on. There's a ton of seals with this airbrush. And of course, you could always th uh, seal up the threads with some beeswax. Then we'll put the needle guard on. Air valve screws on. It has a seal on it. That's good. Go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and put the trigger in. It just goes straight down. There we go. Go ahead and put the lever guide in next, and that's how you want it to go. That's good there. Put the needle chucking guide in next. Slide this in. Hold that needle guide in place. All the way down. Insert the needle. And the lock for the needle. And we'll push the needle all the way forward until it stops. Not real hard. We'll lock it in, and that's good there. Go ahead and put the, the end of that on. Our quick disconnect for the air hose. And lastly, our color cup. And there you go. And there you go. 
is a little bit fiddly putting the trigger and the trigger spring in, but patience is all it takes there. No more difficult than some of the other airbrushes that are out there. This airbrush does come with the 0.35 millimeter needle already installed, and then as a spare to give you the 0.5 millimeter needle and nozzle. Okay, let's go ahead and look to see how this functions. Go ahead and hook it up to my air valve. And I use a MAC valve also in line with this. And I'll adjust it up just a little bit. Great flow. Go ahead and put some paint in this and I will be right back. I'm going to show you how I mix my paint in the airbrush. I put a little bit of flow improver into this, maybe a drop, two drops of flow improver. And the reason why I use that is because I live in the, the desert southwest, very dry here. Then a couple of drops, two, three drops of thinner. And that's it right there, in case you didn't see the flow improver. This is how I do it most of the time. Um, you can go ahead and mix all your stuff inside of a little paint cup if you wanted. And add the paint to this. Put about six drops in there. You can see that. I'm going to mix it. Hook up my airline and okay, so I'm just pushing down on the nozzle here just to make sure I'm not getting any paint out and I'm not and then I want to cut down on my pressure just a little bit with my Mac valve it's this right here my uh, air compressor is putting out about 13 psi. Well, here we go. Okay. So that tells me I need to have more pressure. good there. And of course whatever is left in the nozzle will spray out so it's a good idea to spray away from your target initially and then bring it in and then pretty good there with the 0.35 needle and of course back off a little bit great coverage here I'm 
looks great. I like the feel of this airbrush. It definitely is worth the $50. And if you're a beginner, when it comes to airbrushes, this is the perfect one for you to buy to give it a try if you've never airbrushed before. I know a lot of people are apprehensive about buying an airbrush, but this is definitely the airbrush for you if you want to give it a try. I'll be right back. Next, I'm going to go ahead and spray some primer through this airbrush and this would be the Badger Steinal Res and it's recommended you spray this through a 0.5 millimeter needle I'm gonna keep the 0.35 millimeter needle in here I'm gonna crank up my pressure on my air compressor to about 30 psi make sure my MAC valve is fully open and pull the pour the Steinal Res in this. Neat, not thinned. Bring over my subject that I want to paint. A little Warhammer figure. And airbrush it. I like it. I like it so far. Okay, I'll be right back. I need to clean the airbrush out right away. This Steinal Res is hard, very hard to clean out of an airbrush if you let it dry in there. So I'll be right back. And I'm back. As you can see, here's a close-up for the coverage of the primer, the Steinal Res primer, on this Warhammer figure. Very nice. And I have to say that the Steinal Res cleaned out of the airbrush very nicely, very easy to do. Uh, the advantage of having the removable color cups makes it easier for you to get inside of the airbrush itself and clean out those areas around where the needle is and the nozzle area. So I'm very pleased with that. And as you can see with this airbrush, I was able to do very fine lines to medium lines to full coverage as evident with the primer and this was the Vallejo paint that I used for that and there you have it that was a working review of the gallery 039 airbrush the advanced airbrush as they say and I hope you enjoyed that if you have any questions please put them in the comments below also you can find a link for this airbrush available on Amazon. With that, happy modeling everybody and take care.